today I'm going to be talking about my dashboard web part. And I guess I shouldn't call it my dashboard web part because the it's really Joao's web part. Uh, so it's Joao's dashboard web part. It was written by Joao. Uh, Joao always prefers that uh, and, and likes for us to uh, demo his contributions for him. So I have the honor to be showing the work that Joao has been doing. The web part that I'm talking about today, uh, here is the link for the web part. You can find, you will be able to find it on the SPFX web part sample repository after this call, but it's called My Dashboard. And it actually aggregates things like your files, uh, your feeds, your people, and uh, it is actually quite fantastic. Now, like every web part, every sample that Joao does, Joao always spends the time to make sure that the sample looks really professional and looks complete. Um, you know, if you don't know that it's not an out of the box web part, sometimes it can be very hard uh, to to tell them apart from the web parts that Microsoft has built, and that's a great approach. When you build your own web parts, it's always a good idea to make sure that your web part fits in and and looks professional. It really does help people uh, adopt and trust your web part a lot more. In fact, there's a user experience principle called the aesthetic usability principle that makes people believe that the prettier uh, something is, the prettier a user interface is, the more usable they will believe it is. So here's an example here of the web part as it is running in my environment. Uh, where I have, for example, my agenda, my to-dos. I have, uh, I don't have any to-dos. Great, I don't have anything to do. Um, you can also look at your files. So it shows folders and files as a separate different entities, and you can obviously open each one of them. Uh, but you can also look at the ones that you recently used, as well as the ones that you recently shared. Uh, now, I haven't shared anything because this is my demo environment but uh, this is where these things would go. You also have the feeds. So for example, the comp company announcements uh, and all the news can actually be found in there, as well as the people. So you have the relevant people here. Those are all sample uh, fictitious people. Uh, but uh, you know, this is a, a great way to get give you access to all the people that you need to have access to. And you can see here right away, uh, that's, it uses all the built-in capabilities, for example, the hover effects and things like that. It's a, it's a great web part. And you know the, the style that Joao chose to use and the, the information he chose to use is very cool, but how the web part was built is probably something that's, that's even more important because you can make this dashboard what you need it to be. And let me show you some examples here. First of all, the web part works uh, differently if it's running in SharePoint. It supports dark themes. It's designed to work in Teams and uh, Teams and dark theme as well, obviously. Uh, and again, you'll see how the code is designed to do this. But it also works great or well in a mobile device uh, where it's actually just adding some different sections for each, uh, for each kind of uh, tab that we would see here. So it makes it, it's not a reduced experience, it's actually a best experience for each um, platform or for each profile, if you will. Now the code is probably why we're here. So the code here, uh, actually what Joao does here, he uses a very interesting structure. And if you're just getting started with uh, creating SPFX extensions or SPFX web parts, sorry. Uh, this might be something that uh, might inspire you, but he's actually really made it easy to understand what each part does. So let's zoom in a little bit. And the first thing that, uh, that we have is the atoms. And atoms, if you're not familiar with, with atoms, this is something that is uh, used to basically to to uh, by Jotai, um, and Jotai is a state management uh, library that makes it super easy for you to manage state. Uh, here, I'll put the link here to Jotai, jotai.org, it's a great library. Uh, and 
State management is something that allows you to actually store information, for example, settings or information you've retrieved. And what you can do is you can help control how you repaint your, your screen based on when the state changes. And so the cool thing about that is that you don't have to worry about, okay, which component do I have to update? The state controls which uh, items get re-rendered. And Jotai is great at making sure that you don't re-render the screen uh, unnecessarily, which makes the web part uh, or any solution you use you, using Jotai feel a lot more performant. So the app state atom that uh, Joao uses, he just keeps track of all the state information, like the themes and things like that. The next folder that he's got is the components. And you'll notice here that he's really any element that you may have noticed in the in the screen itself, they're actually created into individual components. And the components are very descriptive. So you know exactly what each component does. So for example, here the dashboard control is the one that renders the actual dashboard. And we'll actually dig deeper into that. But you can also see I got the center, the header, the left, um, you know, so it gives you a great idea of how this information is rendered. So it makes it easy for you if you said, hey, I would really prefer to have, you know, the agenda on the right side. It's pretty easy for you to, to figure out how to make these changes. We also have the constants and the constants we have a tendency as, as developers sometimes to, to hide the constants somewhere. Uh, but what Joao does is he creates a folder for constants, and all the constants are stored in one place. It's a great way if there's anything that's hard coded, like heights or uh, theme rules and things like that, or types of people, as he's using here, he's able to do that. So again, you can find the majority of the constants in a single place. In the sample, we also use React hooks. So React hooks are a a uh, more contemporary way to, if I could say that, it's a more contemporary way to use React uh, by, by actually simplifying how we, we use things, like for example, image utilities, uh, PAPJS, and other utilities. And uh, for example, here, Joao has some code on how to use the local storage, right? So the local storage is, uh, when you want to set information in the user's browser temporarily, so you don't have to you don't have to refresh that inf or re-obtain that information every single time, you're able to use the local storage. And it's usually a few lines of code to use local storage, but by using a React hook called Use Local Storage, Joao was able to actually uh, make use of the local storage without having complicated code throughout his web part. Same thing with using PMPJS. PMPJS, as we've seen before, is an awesome library that makes it easy for you to retrieve, uh, you know, I would call the APIs, the SharePoint APIs. And uh, by using use PMPJS, Joao has wrapped basically all the calls for PMPJS in a single um, function, and it's really cool. The models is how we actually describe the data that we're going to be retrieving. And so Joao, again, has, has combined all the models into a single area. It's easy here to see all the types of things that he's capturing, for example, file information and things like that. We also have the PMPJS configuration and we have some utilities. And the utilities here, uh, I would actually download this web part just for these utilities here. There's a, actually a, a, sh a shim to handle changes to the themes from uh, version eight to version nine. And so to actually make themes a lot easier and a lot cleaner in your web parts. Uh, definitely this is worth, this should be moved into a separate library by itself. And then finally we have the dashboard web part itself. And uh, the dashboard web part obviously is rendered by the dashboard web part class, but the main component of the dashboard is really this dashboard TypeScript file here. Let's look at the code. Because the one thing that we are now able to do by, by breaking down the information or the, the components cleanly like this, we're able to write really clean code. So for example here, what Joao does when he renders the dashboard control itself, 
he's, he's using the Fluent provider to actually capture the theme and to set the theme information so that he doesn't have to worry too much about what color to render things. It's actually built in as part of the, the Fluent theme provider. And then all he has to do is really call within the provider his dashboard control and pass the information about uh, what he wants to do in the dashboard and all the properties. Now, another thing that um, I wanted to point out, because not everyone, you know, some people are just getting started using React, is he's got this weird thing here where he's using uh, open uh, angle bracket and a closed angle bracket. And that's because when you render elements, HTML elements in React, it always needs to have a single parent element. You can't return a whole bunch of elements. You need to return a single parent element. And so, well, there's, there's workarounds for that, but uh, what Joao and what most people would normally do, sorry, is that we would say, well, I'm gonna you know, create a div and I'm gonna put all the, the, the stuff that I need to render inside that div. But the problem with creating an extra div every time you have a component is you're creating just random padding and random elements that don't really need to be there. Uh, so what uh, what it's a good trick to use here is use this kind of uh, this empty element that's not going to introduce any random HTML elements. Uh, React will understand that basically all the children of that empty element are going to be rendered. So cool trick here. Okay, and then if we look at the dashboard control itself, that's the thing that gets called, you'll notice again, it's very easy to understand. I got my left section, which shows my day. I got my center section, and I got my right section, which shows my list of people. Now, I'm not gonna go into every single component, but I wanna show how every component is built the same way. So for example, if I look at my day here, let's click into my day, I have, uh, an element that actually returns tabs. And for each tab, it says either I have the uh, Microsoft Graph Toolkit Agenda and the Microsoft Graph Toolkit To Do. Now you may say, what's the Microsoft Graph Toolkit? Well, the Microsoft Graph Toolkit is actually a great, uh, uh, well, I guess they're <laughs> the web elements that you can embed in your solution to make calls to the graph a lot easier. And it's not just making the calls to the graph, it actually also allows you to, to authenticate, to actually render uh, the, the data you've received in a nice, clean way and in a consistent way. And again, making components that look professional are going to help. Syntactic sugar, I like that. Um, so here's an example. Let's actually dig into this component here, which is one of the components we're using, the agenda component. So that's you know the one thing that you can see in the in the graph toolkit, by the way, is that you always have the ability to open the samples directly in a sandbox. So let's go into the sandbox. And here's the agenda component. Now the sandbox is cool because it actually has two components. It's got kind of the, the preview uh, window, and it's got the code window. And let's, again, take a look at, this is what we are rendering with these two lines of code right here. We got two components. One of them is the login component, which makes sure that we are authenticating the people, obviously, that are using the component. And the second part is basically rendering the agenda. And then doing that actually renders the agenda in a clean way. Now there's lots more components in the Microsoft Graph Toolkit, uh, not just the agenda. You can see here, I do have the agenda that we are using for this sample. But the one thing that you should also know is every component has kind of different ways to call them. And I'm not going to spend too much time into digging into every single component and every single configuration because we'd be here for hours and hours. But it's important to see that there's lots of different samples and lots of different templates that are available. And you also have the ability to overwrite the template for your component. So for example, here, uh, this, is, this is kind of a um, 
if I actually, if you see on the screen here, I'm actually using a different template to render the default data, the loading data, and when there's no data to show. Well, guess what? That's actually what we use in Joao's web part. Now, the other component is the to-do component. Um, we're not going to dig into the to-do component too much, but again, same idea. There's different ways to call the to-do component. So now, if we go back to the code, you'll see that Drow actually uses the, for example, in the My Agenda or the MTG Agenda, he's actually using the Agenda uh, component from the Microsoft Graph Toolkit React. And then he's actually simply calling the agenda where he's actually specifying here how many days that we want to show. And he specifies the class, but then he's got different templates for how to render the loading code, how to render uh, the default element when we actually have data that's been retrieved and how to render what to do when there's no data. And that's the one that you saw, I think, on my screen. So it's very cool, right? And all of that is actually controlling uh, the agenda component, which is, again, on the web part right here. So the similar, very similar approaches for all the other components, the so to-do, the my file, the feed, the people. Some of them, he's actually retrieving the data directly using PMPGS and rendering, uh, doing custom rendering. But those are all great ways. If you're learning how to get started, uh, using the PMPJS, the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. It's definitely a great example here, uh, again, because it works in all the scenarios that you, you might be looking for within Teams, within uh, SPFX. Uh, you know, I strongly recommend you go take a look at it. All right, so that's Joao's dashboard web part, and you can find it after this call at the uh, SPFX web part sample repository. Thank you.